Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. On the bench, I have my old Pattern 14 rifle. And those of you that know, know that these were produced in World War I uh, in the States for the British during the Lend-Lease program. Um, when the U.S. entered World War I, we switched out the chambering in these rifles to 30-06. This is in 3003 British. Switched it out to 30 out 6 and we started producing the M1917 for our, our troops. Um, those are the two Enfield rifles, World War I, that were made in North America. Fast forward to World War II, the British had switched over to the number 4 Enfield, and there were two plants in America producing the number 4, North America, excuse me, North America. There was a Long Branch plant in Canada, and Savage made the number four. Now, I have uh, examples of all four of these North American Enfields. But my Pattern 14, which was given to me years ago, is very little more than a parts rifle. Um, it's been sporterized. The stock has been cut down. The barrel has been cut down. And this is this was common during the you know the 50s, 60s, and 70s. People would buy these, lighten them up, take the hand guards off, cut the barrel down because they went hunting for these. These were a dime a dozen. And compared to say a Winchester Model 70, these were a lot more cost effective. Maybe not as accurate, but they were cheaper. Ammo was plentiful. This is how they put meat on the table. Well, when they sporterized this one, they did it up good. Um, this is the bolt, and uh, they've put a new bolt handle on it. They've ground the living snot out of it. And let's see if I can get her back in. there you have it. The original cutout is still there, but they've cut out more to accommodate this bolt handle. Yeah, but there is a, a company up north of us in Wisconsin named Criterion. They produce rifle barrels. And occasionally Criterion does runs on military surplus rifle barrels. Um, they'll do Grand O3 Springfields. M1917 Enfields and Pattern 14s. January, I got a notification from them. I was on a waiting list that they were doing a run of Pattern 14 barrels. And I bought one. And it got here a few days ago. Now, I've already been in this box. It's already been open. I inspected the barrel. And it's gorgeous. Here's the barrel. This is the proper length. Um, let's see if I can get this in here. If you look, there is, and hopefully it's on camera, I'm lining up where it goes in the receiver. They've cut probably five inches off of this barrel, or the one that's on the rifle. Um, this is going to be my most ambitious project yet, restoring this old Enfield. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to reset. You guys hang on. Be right back. So since I made the order for the barrel, I've been gathering parts. Now, like I said, this is the original bolt or the bolt that came with the rifle. But I picked up a, rear, a lower handguard, an upper handguard, the barrel, of course, and in here are all the metal bits, parts, that I need to restore this rifle. I picked up a new bolt body. You guys see the difference? Holy crap. 
Anyway, I need this extractor. Got a new bull body, Eddie Stone marked. This is my ejector. Upper barrel band. Front sight. Lower barrel band. Stacking swivel. Handguard collet, handguard ring. This is the stacking swivel bolt, upper, upper barrel band bolt, this is the front sight key, the ejector box uh, spring rest, this is the actual ejector box, the ejector box spring, the ejector box bolt, here's the striker that came out of the original. We're going to install that right now into the new one. Well, new to, to new to us one. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, but a key, key ring works great. You get it underneath of there. You get it, you get it under there. You watch, my key ring ain't going to work right. You get it under there, and you pull up on the striker. And then you thread it in. Just thread it home. There we go. Screw that on. There. And it's even in the cock position. Now, that bolt's pretty much assembled. All I gotta do is take the extractor off and put it and install it. And then the bolt's assembled. Very simple. It's nothing like nothing complicated like a Mauser. Um, and we'll get to that. But Let me put all this back in the bag. Set that over here. Put this. And next to the barrel, this is the most expensive part, the stock. These stocks are not easy to come by. And ones that are in very good condition are impossible to come by. Or you're going to pay for them. I was fortunate that Apex had this one, and I'm not afraid to do a little bit of work. She's got Cosmoline. Yeah, Toby's going to be doing some cleaning. Now, I opted for the one, one of their stocks that had been repaired. Um, I don't mind that. I kind of like it. It gives it character. There's the volley sight plate. Eddie Stone marked. Outstanding. Um, I don't know if I'm going to locate a volley site and put it on there or not. I don't know. Um, it's got an intact butt plate, and I don't know if that's going to stay. I might put mine on. There's no unit disc in this, but she's sticky, and she's a dirty, dirty girl. But rear handguard is going to go there. Front handguard goes there. Oh yeah, this is going to be. This is going to be a project. But first things first, this will go back in the bag because it's dirty and it's sticky and it's icky and I don't need it getting crap everywhere. My hands were clean. Um, these will go back in. First things first. What we have to do is get this old girl apart, and we got to get this barrel off of this action. 
This is going to be a whole video series restoring this gun. And it's going to be a whole playlist. We're not going to get into it today. But I'm just, this is a heads up. Letting you guys know what's coming. You guys take care. Stay safe. Have fun. I'll see ya.